Hello folks, in the previous video, we saw how to use SSM to create your AMIs in a secure way. In this video, I'm going to show you how to actually do that in your AWS account. I've written this article to help us with, with the procedure. So let us go ahead and see what are the prerequisites that are required for going ahead and setting an automation. So when you go ahead and see the prerequisites, it says that we need a parameter store entry for a parameter name called as golden AMI latest that is where our latest images are going to be stored and we also need a source AMI also so that our document can pick it up from the source AMI as well. So let us go ahead and create these two parameters in our SSM documents. So if you're unfamiliar with how to create parameters from the AWS CLI, I have written the same steps here as well. As you can see here, all you have to do is copy paste this command and it is going to create a parameter of this name and the value is going to be the AMI ID. Here in this case, I have given an AMI ID of the latest image of Red Hat that is available in the market. If you want, you can go ahead and change this as well from the AMI ID that you can find in the marketplace. So I'm just going to copy this and put it into the CLI. Before going ahead and putting it in the CLI, I have brought you to the parameter store section and you can see here as of now it is empty. So let us go ahead and update those two values and come here and refresh the screen. So let's make the first one and if it is successfully entered then you will get a feedback like this and then let us go ahead and update the second one which is going to be the latest that will be updated by our code and i'm going to say value is going to be to be updated and i'm going to say type is going to be string and i don't want any encryption or anything so this should be fine for us so I'm just going to press enter and if there is an error, it will say that it is obviously we have not changed the parameter name. So I'm just going to change it to latest. I'm just going to press enter. So we have entered both our parameters. Let us go to the console now. So here I'm just going to hit refresh here once again or hit on parameter store and we should see both our parameters here. Let me open the latest one and you can see here the value that we gave as updated and you can also see the other one you can see here the AMI ID is there so we have done with the first prerequisite that is required for this document so the next prerequisite is says that it is an optional so i'm just going to leave it and the next one it says that we need to create a lambda role and we need to give these two permissions here so let us go ahead and do that so i'm just going to go over to my im section click on create role and i'm just going to see that it is a lambda role so i'm just going to choose lambda here and then click on next create permissions and if you're not sure what are the permissions are give, needed if you go back to the article i've given the name exactly as it is here so all you have to do is just go ahead and copy this I'm sorry put it here then select that one and pick up the next permissions and then put it here so select that click on next and it's asking me what is the role name so i'm just going to use the role name that is here so i'm just going to paste that click on create roles so we have created the first role that is required and let us go ahead and see what other roles are required there's one more role that is required with this permission so let's copy that and click on create role and this is going to be an ec2 role so select the permissions click on next and the role name is going to be a managed instance role So our second role is also done. And finally, there's one more role that is required that is called as automation service role and it requires two permissions. So this role is going to assume the managed instance and create instances and images for us. So that is why we need to give a couple of roles for that one. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and this needs to be called as automation service role. So I'm just going to put an automation service role and it has this permissions click on create and next step is for this automation service role we need to add some inline policies so that it can assume the managed instance role so i'm just going to click on attach policies and i'm going to say click on create policy and in this section i'm just going to choose json because i have the policy already written all you have to do is update it with your managed instance ar and number Remember, we created a role called manage instance role and we just need to update our AR on here. So I'm just going to copy this first. Go here, put it here 
and then click on review policy I must have not copied it properly just going to put the brackets there click on review policy and you see here it gives me an error saying it is not a valid ARN because my account number is missing so I'm just going to go back here and click on roles click on managed instance role copy this ARN go ahead and update it here and click on review policy so everything is good here allow SSM automation to assume managed instance role so you can give a descriptive name as well I've just put everything usually in the name itself so it's quite clear for me what the role is going to do so if I go ahead and choose this automation service role man you will have the permissions here and if I go to the roles here and on the automation section you should be able to attach that as well now so I'm just going to choose this one attach policy and you can see here I have attached that policy as well so that is one more prerequisite that we need to do for both the roles that is manage instance role and automation service role we need to have an assume policy so that they can as the SSM service can assume these policies and trigger actions on behalf of you so I'm just going to copy this and how to I'm going to show you how to update them in both the roles so if you go to the trust relationship section and you go ahead and click on edit just going to replace the text update trust policy so we have done this for one of them that is manage instance role and we are going to do that for automation service role as well okay for some reason the automation service role is still not reflecting uh, the policy that we updated I'm just going to hit refresh here yep so I can see the additional role as well here so we have done these prerequisites up to this point so the next step is create the parameters this is also we have done we have created the parameter store with the source as uh, Red Hat Linux given by the marketplace and the update AMI that is the new AMI when it is built it will be updated with the value here and next is we also need a lambda function so that whenever a new AMI is built we want the parameter store to be updated with that new value so we can do that by using a lambda function and that is what we are going to do now and remember we also created a lambda role for SSM so we are going to leverage that role as well so let me go to my lambda functions click on create function and what should be my name of function if I go back here I've given the name as well so that we can reuse the same names automation SSM so choose that and then I'm just going to choose Python 2.7 because that's what it says it needs to be and then I'm going to choose the role now an existing role has to be lambda SSM role click on create function now what should be the code for my lambda function now so since some of us will not be familiar with how to write the code I have written the code also so all you have to do is just go ahead and copy paste it if you go to the top of this document section and you, you will have build scripts and under build scripts you will have a document which is called as automation SSM RAM so click on raw and copy this whole section and paste it into your lambda function now so you don't have to change any other parameters here you can leave everything as it is it should work by default so click on save we don't have to do anything more here let me go back to my document here click on back so we are done with creating our lambda function also we have done with this step we have updated the code we have saved it so the final step is creating the automation document itself in SSM parameter store so how do I do that so if I go back to my SSM section this is the parameter section let me go to the next one here I have selected the documents and these are all the documents Amazon has written and if I go ahead and choose by my name as of now there are no documents so to create a new one click on create document and make sure you need to change it to automation document and I'm going to give it a friendly name so that I can remember it I'm, I'm going to call this as a document to create a golden AMI so I'm just going to paste that here and once again the code for this is uh, already given there's a pre-written code I'm just going to remove everything and like I said earlier I have written that code also here for Linux as well as Windows in this video we are going to do only Linux so I'm just going to copy the Linux document here 
and sometimes if you have an error for the template you have to copy it manually here just going to copy that and paste it here and if there are no errors you should be able to successfully save them so if you want to view them you can see here this is the document and you can just go ahead and see the content of it and if you want to go ahead and add some tags or if you want to share it with other third parties you can do it here and if you want to customize the uh, document itself you can go ahead and update it here you can see the source AMI ID it is going to automatically pick it from my SSM document and it is automatically picking the instance role that we just now created that is manage instance role and it is also picking the automation role that we created you see here this is the name of the role the automation service role and if you want to run it in a customized VPC and not in a default VPC you can go ahead and edit the subnet ID also and our target AMI name when it is created successfully this is the name of it, the AMI it will be if I go to my EC2 section now and go to my AMI section as of now you can see here there are no AMIs when the document completes successfully we should be able to have an AMI which has this name saying golden AMI red hat version 7 and then built on this date and we are going to use a t2 micro version of instance type so that uh, we can build this AMI and there are no pre and post update scripts at this moment if you want you can write your pre and post update scripts so before the installation of the operating system and upgrade of the operating system you can run some scripts harden some values and post updates you can verify whether the values have been updated or not or whether it is compliant to say for example the CIS standards or OWASP standards and make the uh, recommendations to your security team to update their knowledge base saying a new AMI has been created and all the instances has to be with the new AMI and there might be some in cases where you want to exclude the certain packages from installing in your operating system that might be a custom binary that requires a lower level versions of a certain runtime so you will have to exclude certain packages or if you want to if you want to include all the packages so these are all the parameters that is given now so if I go back here all the screenshots are given so all the things that we have done here are listed here so you can go ahead and do that so now the document is ready the next step is creation of the AMI itself so for that I'm going to go to my SSM service and under automation section you go ahead and click on execute automation and it's asking you which type of our document that you want to run we want to run the one that we created so I'm just going to select that and you can see here by default it fills in all the values all the parameter values if you want to customize any of them you can do that but since we pre-filled it in the code itself we don't have to change anything I'm just going to click on execute automation but before doing that I'm going to go ahead and show you my instances page here as of now there is nothing running and once we go ahead and click on execute automation it is going to run through all my documents one step at a time and it is going to first launch an instance update some software install some customizations that I have made and install the inspector agent that we have and okay uh, there seems to be some error that is failed let us come back to that let me if you have an error like this I'm just going to go ahead and see it and uh, looks like uh, Amazon is running out of capacity here it says that we do not have sufficient memory capacity to run it so I'm just going to rerun this document with a uh, t2 medium or um, T2 large so I'm just going to say owner and there's another way so that you can know how to customize these parameters very easily so I'm just going to say T2 large here I'm just going to say execute automation and uh, if Amazon has capacity we should be able to execute it now so where we were we were talking about inspector agent so what I'm doing is I'm installing the inspector agent also in this a document so the AMI will have in uh, agent pre uh, pre installed so if I want to run some uh, validation checks or some uh, vulnerability checks on the AMI I will have the agent pre configured and I can run them so it's going to stop the instance create an image make an encrypted copy of the image which is unique to your account because it is going to use the default key in your account and it will encrypt with that key and creates a certain uh, tags on your key of the AMIs and then updates the parameter store and finally terminates the instance so these are all the steps that is going to run here and if you scroll up to the way top it says that there are 10 steps and it's currently running one and the first step is in progress so that is launching the instance if I go to my EC2 instance now and hit refresh I should be able to see one instance that is coming up online here 
how do I know this is my instance? You can see here the IAM role. It's also managed instance role. And you can see here we gave T2 large and it is building it up now. So this document is going to take uh, at least uh, five to 10 minutes uh, for you to get completed all the 10 steps. And uh, meanwhile, we'll go ahead and see what is happening at uh, each and every stage after a few minutes of gap. Now you can see that the entire automation process is completed. Let us go ahead and see the EC2 instance first and check the state. I'm just going to refresh my screen here. So the, automatically the instance has been terminated. I'm going to go over to my AMI section and you can see here there is an encrypted golden AMI for my Red Hat Linux is there and you can see the AMI ID. I'm just going to copy that. Let me go to my parameter source section and this must be the one now this is the documents and I'm just going to go ahead and choose the parameter and this is the source we need the latest one this is the latest one and you can see here already the version is 2 and it is updated by my lambda so go ahead and choose that and you can see here that this version of AMI is updated just going to find and you can see here this is the same AMI ID that was created. If I go back to history and you can see here we updated this value and this new value of my new AMI has been updated by my Lambda process. So that is how in short you automate your AMI process that is securely building your AMI through your automation triggers and then updating the parameter store with a new value. So if you have a cloud formation document which can go ahead and pick this uh, parameter store value and every night you can go ahead and create a new AMI and uh, make sure that uh, all your cloud formation documents will pick up the latest AMI that your account has. In the next video, I'll show you how you can build your AMI overnight. Every day that is a new AMI will be created and every new stack that is launched from that day onwards will have the latest AMI. If you have any questions in setting this up in your account or in your training exercises, let me know in the comment section. I'll be happy to help them with you. Thanks for watching. Happy learning.